Welcome back. It's the final part of the learn to electroform video tutorial series. So this is going to be a short video and then we're finally going to return to some more making of content that I love to make. For this final video, I am going to show you how I filter my electroforming solution. So filtering your solution is just as simple as it sounds. Now filtering is not something you have to do every single time after you electroform something. The frequency of filtering is based on how much you're electroforming and personally whenever I I kind of put my solution away for a little bit when I put it back in its original containers. I usually filter it back into the container so that any impurities or anything that might have gotten in it is taken out and it's kind of ready for the next use. Now if you are electroforming a lot after say several runs of you know maybe you electroform five to ten pieces at a time and you have done that four or five six times you might need to filter your solution and you'll be able to tell that you need to filter your solution because there's going to be this kind of like dark brownish sludge at the bottom the sludge tends to sometimes build up on your anode and when you agitate your solution it will kind of fall off and it'll get cloudy and murky and then you definitely know you need to filter. But overall, you don't have to filter an absolute ton. Now, the other reason you may want to filter your solution is if you're getting some kind of weird funky growth, something's not plating correctly, you're getting a brittle coat or plate, you might need to filter it to kind of get any impurities out and refresh your bath. So in this case, I have my beaker right here of solution. Now this was over a thousand milliliters. So you can see that it's not a thousand milliliters anymore. It is now about 650. So this has been sitting for quite a while. Like I told you, don't, you know, let your solution sit for quite a while. I did that. It's been sitting. What this means is a lot of it has evaporated. I have some blue crystals and I have some corrosion on my anode. I have crystal buildup on my anode. So I need a little bit more than just a simple filter. If it focuses, you can see a blue crystal sit in right there. I have some more at the bottom and then I have this kind of overgrowth on the inside of the beaker there that all needs to get cleaned off. So a little bit of maintenance. It's not too bad for sitting out for quite a while, but at the same time, this is exactly why I do recommend not leaving your solution out and not doing that. But I'm sure many of you know because, you know, as artists, we get all distracted and forget to put things away or our workstations are super super messy and we're like oh we'll clean it eventually and we never do but anyway we're gonna filter it to filter your solution you don't need anything too crazy i always set my filtering station kind of up on a plastic garbage bag mostly so if i spill anything so i don't have to worry about kind of destroying my desk even though it is already destroyed from the large amount of different crafts i have done on here what you're gonna need just a couple simple things first definitely recommend some eye protection. Uh, you do not want to splash anything in your eyes. Chemical resistant gloves are helpful or just some kind of nitrile gloves. Now you just need a couple other simple things and that is your empty container. So just make sure you're storing it in the correct type of plastic or glass if you're using it. A funnel. So I just got these plastic funnels. I believe I got them from Amazon. Yeah, I believe these were from Amazon, but you can get them, you know, Amazon, Harbor Freight, Lowe's, any kind of hardware store and some filters. Now, you don't need special lab grade filters. These are just basic coffee filters. I bought a pack of what looks like 10,000 coffee filters from probably Walmart. And yeah, so just coffee filters. And I usually double them up. I do two coffee filters. And all you're gonna do is take your coffee filters, stick them in your funnel. So they're just sitting like that. Open that. So you just stick that in here and that's it. Oh, when I do keep some paper towels handy, just in case uh, anything spills, kind of easy to get them. Okay, hopefully this does not spill everywhere. And just pour it out. Now I could see at the very end of my solution it was getting a little sludge colored. So let's see if I can kind of show you. So it did get a little dark sludgy colored there. Um, that's the very bottom, which does tend to happen when you know you leave it alone for a long time. But you can see that there's a couple blue crystals. Now you can dissolve these in uh, some distilled water. And the reason I got these blue crystals is because I had a lot of evaporation, so they kind of precipitated out of the solution. This is just copper sulfate. What I'm actually probably gonna do is slightly crush them up and throw them back in the bottle for now. And when I do go to use my solution, I am going to just dissolve them then. 
but this one like actually grew around the anode. So again, this way you don't want to really leave your anode. I'm just using the chopstick, kind of break that off the anode. There we go. So my coil is ever so slightly covered in these crystals. So that's gonna be pretty easy to clean. Actually, in this case, I might be able to just kind of break them off into the beaker right now. So I'm just gonna break them off back into the beaker. And what I'll do is I'll pour a little bit of distilled water and pour that right into my solution. So I can kind of see how dirty my coil was because you can get, you'll see all the stuff kind of coming off on the paper towel. And just to show you, so the filtering is done. So you can see the little sludge there at the bottom. Not a lot, but that's definitely contaminants that you don't want in your solution. So yeah, we got some contamination. I got some distilled water. Pour it into the beaker. I don't need a lot. I'm gonna kind of take it and slightly crush it up. Now to really dissolve the blue crystals, you do need warm water. Um, I have made a video on how to dissolve the blue crystals. You can watch it up here. But I'm gonna kind of crush them up so they're a little smaller. Just to make it easier to pour back into the beaker. So my solution has drained and it's just a little sludge in this. So I am going to take this and get rid of that. Now I am going to pour back in the crystals that are like semi-dissolved. And this will add some distilled water back into my solution. I'm just, so my solution is pretty good. I actually probably have a thousand milliliters in here again and you can see the little little bit of a uh, crystallization at the bottom but that's okay. Next time I use it when I pour it out I'll probably just dissolve the crystals back into the solution. But I don't feel like doing that right now. If you're worried about the acid in the solution or anything what you can do is pour some uh, distilled water in and baking soda and that will neutralize anything that's left in here. Now I've worked with this enough and I kind of keep this in its own little spot so doesn't matter to me. I'm not gonna really do that right this second, but I'm just gonna make sure it's nice, dry, cleaned out. So beaker's all dry and cleaned up. And now the next thing is the coil. So I do need to clean my anode coil pretty well. So I'll kind of try to scrub some of this off. The one thing I'm gonna do though, before I do that is it kind of kicks up a little bit of dust. So I'm gonna throw my dust mask on. So usually I use this dust mask when I am like sawing or sanding jewelry, but it works to kind of not breathe in the dust that gets kicked up. Okay, steel wool. This is the easiest way to clean your anode, in my opinion. So I just take a little piece and I start shining it up. Now you'll start seeing it actually come, the shine come back to it when you do this. I can see the corrosion just falling off. So there's a decent bit of corrosion on here since I let it sit for so long. Okay, now I'm getting to the part where there was the crystal stuck on it. So this just requires a little extra scrubbing, but they do come off. So my coil is all cleaned up. The most important thing when you are filtering your solution is to make sure that everything is clean and the corrosion is cleaned off. Because what happens is when you have corrosion, when you put an alligator clip on that corrosion or you have corrosion on your bus bar and you put it, you try to tie your like thin cathode wire to that bus bar and hang a piece from it and it's not connecting 100% because of that corrosion, you're not gonna have a full electrical circuit, which means you're gonna get a lot of issues with your electroforming. So cleaning the corrosion is an important step of the process. 
even though it's not fun and requires a lot of elbow grease. It could probably be made easier with a Dremel type tool and using a uh, brass bristle brush or something. So you can probably make it a little easier that way. I probably should have done that, but I just did it the old fashioned way, some steel wool. And usually before, like if this is some like world, I'll, le I'll leave it alone. And then what I will do is clean it again before I use it and then kind of rinse all of this stuff to make sure there's no contamination. There's no steel inside my beaker because yeah, I don't want that. But overall, we have a clean electroforming setup, filtered solution, and it's all ready for the next time. Filtering your solution is pretty simple. It's not a complex process. It just takes a little bit of time and really doesn't even take that much time. This whole process probably took me about 25 minutes of that. It's a simple step and something that you don't want to skip, especially when you're putting away for a while, you wanna make sure that there's no contaminants in it. And the point of filtering your solution is that it will make your solution last so much longer. So especially if you buy your own and you don't make it, that way you don't have to keep replacing solution, keep buying more because it will just last a lot longer. It's important that you make that a part of your like regular maintenance routine. It is part of electroforming bath maintenance. I mean, I will eventually make a future video about bath maintenance, but I do want to go back to the making of videos. So I'll have a few different ones in between before I go back to more electroforming tutorial videos. I really hope you guys have found this series helpful. I love all your comments and questions. You guys ask some fantastic questions and I know sometimes it takes me a little while to respond back to them, but I do try to get back to as many of you as possible and answer your questions. If you have any future videos that you would like to see on electroforming or specific questions, please drop them down in the comments below and I will try to make a video on them. Don't forget to hit the like button, click the subscribe and ring the notification bell. I'll see you at the next one.